Hello, this is Sanout here, and welcome back to Sanout's Pickups. Yes, that's a lot of stuff in front of us. Yes, this video is probably going to be long, but here we go. Uh, this is everything I picked up between May the 4th, 2019, and May the 10th of 2019. And this is an obscene amount of stuff to receive in one week, but guess what? I'm essentially caught up with Marvel Legends? <laughs> Anyways, um, so what we have here is a lot of just, it was time to, to catch up on stuff. Because I had been getting behind, I was slipping behind on Marvel Legends. I had slipped behind on some Star Wars and some Transformers and stuff. So, uh, yeah, we kind of finished off a lot. There's still a couple Marvel Legends things that I don't have that I want. Um, mostly exclusives that I can't find, thanks to uh, the walls, both the greens and marked. Uh, but... Uh, let's just move on with what we got in front of us, because there's plenty to talk about here. So, first up, let's talk about uh, things in different orders. Normally I start with the usual stuff, but the usual stuff is like farther back. So what I'm going to do is just go from the front to the back, uh, as I kind of group things somewhat accordingly. First up, my comics poll list this week, considering last week was free comic book day and I picked up a month's worth of comics, was a simple Hawkman number 12, fantastic issue. And Justice League Odyssey, number nine. Also fantastic. Woohoo! Comics are done. Moving those out of the way. Let's talk about home video, because I've actually been having a lot of discussion about a certain thing I got. No, I did not buy two copies of Dragon Ball Super Part 5. I got a bootleg copy from Amazon. There's a video up on my channel I posted yesterday, which talked about the difference between a bootleg and an official copy the same Dragon Ball volume. This is not going to stay in my collection. That's got to go back to Amazon so they don't charge me. This is staying though. So we got a nice uh, Dragon Ball Super Part 5. And I went to Best Buy uh, and actually picked up Part 6 as well. Ironically, I mentioned how the cases were different from the uh, official to the bootleg. So you know, it's like a nice like, beveled case. Funimation's gotten to a cheaper case now. So now it's like the that, that style. It's kind of like dust on it. It's kind of annoying. But anyways... Um, so they slightly changed the case, but the rest of it's still the same, like, you know, shiny only cover and all the stuff I covered in the other video. Uh, but for now, I just need to get part seven, which I think just came out this month. Uh, it hasn't hit stores around me, so look at that. Six volumes. Sweet. So, getting caught up on that. Uh, I just need to get seven before eight comes out. And then I also picked up in the, you know, discount bins, we have the director's cut of Hellboy on Blu-ray and Hellboy 2 The Golden Army. I have both of these on DVD. I have like the collector's editions DVDs for them. Uh, and I have the two animated movies on DVD as well as Blu-ray. So it's nice to have the two, uh, the first two live action ones on Blu-ray um, since I will be getting the 2019 movie as well. Uh, still funny that Columbia, Universal, third live action movie is Lionsgate. Um, yeah, so those are cool finds. Uh, notice that this is like the same case style as what Funimation's using. So it's not like it's a bad case. It's just, it's not as nice. Uh, that's all. Moving along, uh, these two pop vinyls were on sale for two bucks a piece at GameStop. They were just clearing some stuff out, so I got Nina Williams from Tekken uh, and her classic purple battle suit. Uh, so that was cool. I wanted to get her. I had uh, Jin and Double Jin, and then Domino, uh, who I wanted to get as a comic based one. I like Domino a lot, so you know. For two bucks, I was like, yeah, let me let me just go for those. Um, moving along as well, uh, we have Android 17 from the Dragon Stars line, Wave 10. Uh, between the Wave 9 and Wave 10, the six figures there, it's a lot of uh, repeat forms. Uh, there's like Piccolo, which is great, but I have, you know, I have the figure art, um, and there's like a Super Saiyan 3 Goku and a Cell, and it's like I got figure arts of Cell, and I don't need another Goku. Uh, this Android 17 and the Super Saiyan 4 Goku are the only two I want to get, so if I can find the Super Saiyan 4 Goku. Android 17 here is really well done. His legs are a little bit long, not gonna dance around that, but he's got really good articulation. Uh, my only real complaint is his alternate hands. Because uh, his open hands are really, really thick because of the ball joint. Because they increased, this is this was nice. They increased the size of the peg, uh, so it doesn't feel like it's going to break anymore, which is wonderful. Um, and there's no build a figure part this time around. We do get a couple extra hands. These are kind of like grappling hands, but again, they look uh, a little too big because of the new new joint. Uh, the fists look fine, so I'm probably just going to leave them with fists. But yay, 17, uh, six series 11 uh, has 18, so that's going to be cool. I have the 18 model kit. Uh, which is almost the same size, but I do want to get both in 
Dragon Star, so they match. And I have a 16 figure, so those, those, the three of them should look good together. Um, so I'll find that Super Saiyan 4 Goku. Next wave, next batch got a lot of figures I want, so it's super cool. Uh, Dragon Stars has gotten much better. Uh, moving along, I finally decided to pick up Ironhide and Six Gun from Transformers Siege. Uh, Six Gun, of course, is a brand new character. We haven't gotten him in the modern G1 updates. Uh, he was the buddy robot for Metroplex, so Wave 1 had Cog, which went with Fortress Maximus. This guy was Metroplex. Uh, super happy, really cool figure, really like him. Not going to go super detailed because of all the stuff we have to talk about, but um, really nice, really recommended. If you uh, want to know my opinion, I definitely recommend Six Gun. He's super awesome. I, uh, I passed over him a few times because of Marvel Legends and stuff, but uh, here's Ironhide. I was like, all right, let's get Ironhide. So I got uh, basically a reason for this because the universe Ironhide, I I mostly, for the most part, like, you know, Prowl Sideswipe, I can live with my universe versions, but then Ironhide's universe version was so terrible. I was like, I need a new Ironhide. Um, so this is, this is really awesome. Fantastic figure. Really, really love this guy. Um, super stocky and really bulky and awesome. And I love him. So that is Transformers. Uh, the only thing I'm missing from Transformers is the Wave 2 MicroMaster packs because I haven't found those. So I need to probably order those soon. But uh, other than that, I'm caught up uh, for what I need. Moving on to Star Wars, uh, Best Buy, surprisingly Best Buy, I was able to get the fan channel exclusive Black Series General Grievous. Uh, this guy is the six inch scale one. Uh, it's not a perfect figure by any means, but you know, he's got some joints that are a little loose and weird, uh, and I wish the feet would pivot inward a little bit, but I don't think he actually does that in the movie, to be honest. I think these are just adjust in the film. Uh, so, you know, he's pretty good. I like the scale. He looks good next to other Black Series figures, and I do really like uh, the lightsabers. And, you know, I, I kind of don't like the split the arm kind of gimmick. I'd rather have alternate arms, but it works for what it is. Uh, he's a $30 figure, so he's a little bit more expensive. I Surprisingly, Best Buy had him. I did not realize. Um, and he also has his blaster, and he has a cloth cape. I don't like the cloth. I don't like the cape look on Grievous as much, um, but... You know, he has a cloth cape that can go around his neck. But uh, back to the Best Buy thing, I was surprised to see him because GameStop was the only physical retailer carrying fan channel exclusives. And I know some Barnes and Nobles, not mine, got Grievous as well. So that's kind of how he looks with the cape. If anyone's curious, it does have the pockets for the lightsaber handles. So it was kind of cool to see him at Best Buy. I was like, all right, time to get him. Uh, I'm caught up on Star Wars Black Series now. The uh, next wave actually has six figures I want. So that's a little different. Usually I'm picking and choosing. So that's that's pretty cool. Uh, not to leave Chuckles out of this equation here. Here's uh, Toy Story. Let's uh, see the Disney Store plush. It's the ten dollar plush the size of Chuckles uh, from Toy Story Three. So uh, this is just go the Toy Story collection. He's got that rough scale that I like for my Toy Story stuff, um, and he was super cool. Uh, this is like the only Chuckles I think that's been made essentially. But he's a Disney Store exclusive, so uh, my store only had one, so I was super happy to find him. And, uh, yeah, so Chuckles gets to join uh, the Toy Story collection. So, moving along, uh, we're just going to keep ignoring the center path for now. My Ami Ami order arrived, which contained two items, one of which I've already reviewed. Here is SH Figure Arts uh, Kiva from the Shinkocho Seho line. Beautiful figure. I did a full review on this, so I'm not going to talk about them anymore. Uh, go check out the video if you haven't already. Uh, I was really proud of how that video turned out. We will talk about uh, Figma Persona 5 Fox. Now, I have been collecting the Persona 5 Figmas, as Persona 5 is my favorite of the Persona games, being the one I've played the most of. Um, but I really do love Persona 5, and I'm trying to get all the Phantom Thieves as long as they make them. Uh, so I have uh, Joker, and I have Panther, and now I have Fox. Uh, they're great. If you want to see me review these, let me know in the comments. I'm not sure if there is much interest in me reviewing Persona Figmas. So if you want to see a review of the Persona Figmas, let me know in the comments because I, I really want to know. Um, I'll probably do a Twitter poll as well. But uh, these are fantastic figures. These are just absolutely amazing. I love that Figma comes with stands with arms. Uh, so super cool. Uh, that's Fox. All right. Now we get into Marvel because the rest of this is Marvel. In fact, I'm going to move the camera up a bit because the rest of this is Marvel. So first up, uh, we're going to talk about the big lady back here. This is the Marvel's Wasp with wing effects. Uh, basically the whole gimmick here is that you squeeze the legs and the wings pop up. She's been out forever. I never picked her up uh, at Target Wall or anything, but Disney Store had her half off. And so uh, came to the decision, yeah, she's cool, I should get her. I'm kind of leaving her in the box because this whole wing gimmick works better that way. Um, but 
you know, that's that's like I'm just calling her giant wasp. Hopefully I can get this Ant-Man somewhere online, maybe, just to go with her. Um, I have like an addiction to MCU Ant-Man and Wasp stuff, which is why I also picked up the Marvel Select Ant-Man and Wasp. I just knocked over Wasp. Uh, Ant-Man and Wasp here are really cool. Uh, this is the thing is I don't usually buy Marvel Selects just because, you know, Legends. Selects are like a seven inch scale. Legends are like a six inch scale. I know there's a lot of technicalities in there. Um, Wasp is not wanting to stand at the moment, uh, but these I picked up because they're Ant-Man and Wasp and they're Disney store exclusives. So that's, that's something to keep in mind. You're not going to find these at comic shops, uh, directly from Diamond, uh, but they are Diamond Select Toys, Marvel Select, Disney store exclusives. This Ant-Man, honestly, both of them are better than the Marvel Legends versions for one distinctive reason, better than the figure arts too. These were made so far after the movies that they have the most accurate sculpts and details. Uh, this is what is sold me, well, what sold me on them is the little minifigures we'll get to in a second, but what really like sold these as being like, oh wow, these are better than the other ones I have is because they are more accurate. They even get down to like little details, like the little like disc on the back of his uh, suit. So it's really a much more accurate color, much more accurate styling. Uh, there's no clear eye visors, so there's no eyes underneath, but it's okay because both of them are painted. I kind of like didn't like the fact that Marvel Legends had Wasp with a clear visor and then Ant-Man with a solid color, but looks fantastic. Really do like it. Uh, I like the hands better too because you get kind of like two opens and then you get uh, two fists. One of the fists went flying just now, but you get two fists. Really great. Articulation, um, I'm not going to review these in full, so I'm going to do this here real quick. Uh, you can't really get any up and down, which kind of sucks. He's pretty much just left and right. Uh, shoulders get pretty decent range. That's the only thing I think is that the articulation isn't as good as the Legends uh, versions, but the uh, details and styling are cool. I like the uh, torso uh, joint there. Neat. Uh, he's got double joint knees, which is pretty nice. And the ankles. I always say that the most important uh, articulation point is the ankles because that's where your figure is going to stand. And he's got he's got good ankles, so he's good to go. He's pretty awesome. Uh, moving to Wasp, same thing. She's got the more accurate gold color. All the others seem to be too bright, and the more accurate helmet for the most part uh, as well. And I do like how the wrist is able to bend down far enough for you to simulate her blasters. And I do like this open hand as opposed to like the Legends version had like the very straight. Uh, stagnant hand, this one's kind of a more of a splayed open. And of course she comes with the opposite for the other hand. So another splayed and another uh, fist. And so she's really cool. Uh, the actual like way they engineered the legs, they actually go back a bit. So if you wanted to have her, have her kind of in a more flying pose, I had that option. The only thing is that like her torso joint makes up for the fact that her neck can't pivot. That's the only real thing to complain about here. I do like the elbows, even if they are a little restricted and they only go about that far. Um, so overall, you're not going to get as much articulation as Legends, but the sculpting and paint detail is fantastic, and they are a bit larger, so they won't going to scale with Legends too well. But I do like this extra uh, couple joints in the, the ankle. So overall, really nice. Wings can fold up. Wings do not remove, by the way. They're they're affixed on there. So no. Uh, so you know that kind of you know it, it kind of breaks up the look a little bit on a shelf because you're like, oh, she's not really had the wings when she's giant size, but. Whatever, uh, pretty awesome. I really do like these figures quite a bit. Uh, on top of that, the bonus is that Wasp came with a smaller version of herself where she's leaping. She's got the wings open, she looks fantastic. Uh, there, and then she also came with a figure of, uh, no, this actually did not come with her. Sorry, let me back up. She came with this one of Ant-Man, uh, which is his Civil War uh, slash original movie look. And then Ant-Man came with um, his his current look with, you know, that matches the Ant-Man and Wasp suit in a smaller form. And he came with uh, Janet Van Dyne in her Wasp costume. And then also you got the uh, Hank Pym in his Quantum Realm suit. So this is really cool. I like the little minifigures. Uh, they have little stands. These actually do come off the stands like that. So if you did want them off, that is an option, uh, the Janet just, she doesn't need a stand, she just crouched down, she's cool. So it's kind of cool if you can kind of pair like this Janet with this Ant-Man, and then you get kind of like the Janet and Hank look. Uh, this, it, it works close enough for me. Um, and then you can have like, you know, there's there's Aunt, there's uh, Hope and Scott, and then you can just have like, yeah, old man Hank running around. So pretty cool. Uh, I talked way too long about these. I really do love them. Uh, they're like 25, they were 25 each at uh, Disney store. 
Um, so they are Disney Star exclusives, but you get, you know, the figures, alternate hands, and a whole lot of little mini guys. Um, so pretty, pretty worth it to me. Uh, then again, big Ant-Man and Wasp fans. So let's uh, let's pull the little group here. So what we have here uh, in this mess of stuff on top of a book, uh, we have the finishing touches of the Kingpin and Caliban waves. Uh, for so first up, we're going to talk about Caliban because uh, I actually want to review this wave in full. Uh, so let me know if you actually want to see a full video on these. I, I thought this wave was fantastic. Uh, I misplaced the other head for Wolverine. It's terrible. Uh, that's all you need to know. If I do a review, I'll, I'll find it somehow. Uh, but this is Weapon X. Uh, this is, you know, Wolverine's, like, te being tested on experimental guy. Uh, in terms of, like, things that I really like about this figure, uh, a lot of people complain there's more, just too many Wolverines. I say I suffered through too many Captain Americas and Iron Mans, and now I'm getting a bunch of Wolverines, and I'm okay with that. Um, anyways, <laughs> no one ever complains and says there's too many Spider-Men, just tell you that much. So, first up, they added, like, you know, he's got the hairy detail, because he's Wolverine, so they added the, the details. Kind of like the stuff they did in Hercules, which is really nice. But the part that I, I really enjoyed about this figure was the claws, because they actually have them more inset than previous Wolverines. Uh, if you notice on the older um, hands, they were really close to the edge. These are more inset, and they're a little bit sturdier of a plastic, so, we're not, so you didn't have the bent claw issue that all the other Wolverine legends have had. So that's fantastic. I'm sure they can still come out. I don't really want to mess with them. They look perfect right now. So hopefully that means the X-Force Wolverine and the, the other Wolverine from the Vintage Wave are going to be having the same kind of claws. Um, so that's super awesome. The head also uh, has no restricted movement due to cord or anything. It's just his hair. And this actually, this cord pops out, so you can swap the head. And so that was a surprise. I was kind of not sure how that was going to work. Um, but really cool, really cool Weapon X. Uh, I picked him up at GameStop. Uh, also at GameStop, I picked up Forge. Now, Forge here, I think, is the weakest of the Caliban wave. Um, the one thing I don't talk about is that, like, his hand is so loose that he can't hold either of the guns very well, and this one's just... It's very floppy, so I kind of have to, like, rest it under against his torso. And then also, he's got the Cyclops syndrome of just pieces that pop off easily. Um, but other than that, he's a, he's a pretty cool figure. It's nice to finally get Forge. Uh, he is one of those X-Men characters that... I think needed to get made. Uh, next, so I also got him at GameStop. Uh, actually, I got all the Caliban ones at GameStop. So here's Blink. Had to travel across town for her because she teleported away, I guess. Uh, so Blink here, she's got the daggers for throwing portals. She's got like this piece, which is different than Electra's. It's, uh, Electra's was straight. This one's curved off to the side, so that's cool because it kind of works with Blink because it allows her to crouch more. Really fantastic. Uh, Blink was a character from Age of Apocalypse that worked to arrange exiles. And uh, I really like her. She was she's super cool. Um, I do like her ability, and they represented that with a really cool um, plastic piece that can actually fit around her. So you can do cool like you can do some really cool pictures with this too. Uh, maybe crouching, having her come out of a portal, or you could say like, oh, well she sent Wolverine through a portal, and then you can have that going on or something like that. It's it's got a lot of use. It's pretty cool. I just kind of like right now I've just had it sitting at her feet like she just teleported through. Uh, but Blink, Blink is pretty awesome. The surprise hit of the wave was Skullbuster. Uh, Skullbuster with the alternate head of Reese from the Reavers. Reavers are not super well known these days, but they were for the Outback era and such. Uh, this is a reuse of the Deathlock mold. I'm pretty sure he just got made because he could use, reuse Deathlock. So Deathlock's already a fantastic figure. Skullbuster's great too, but then he adds like this bandolier and he adds, you know, the, the jacket, the new jacket's really cool. And for whatever reason, it just works for me. And it, it, it feels a little bit like a G.I. Joe figure in a way. But at the same time, I, I really like it. Uh, overall, he was just a big surprise. I was not expecting to like Skullbuster as much as I did. Uh, he's probably one of my favorite figures of the wave, actually. And then, of course, uh, all of them finish off Caliban, which last week we just had a torso. Um, put together this wave really quick. Uh, X-Men stuff gets me motivated, I guess. But uh, thanks to GameStop having all four of those between, like, three stores... We got Caliban, uh, so he looks fantastic. He's he's got a lot of new parts. Apparently, the chest is new, but he's got similar stuff to like other larger figures like Monster Venom and Space Venom. Uh, but I love the hands. I love the sculpting. He's got this cool pearlescent finish. He just looks fantastic. He's a big angry monster, and that's pretty awesome. Uh, this torso, especially, it feels bulky, but it doesn't feel as big as like Monster Venom, which had like this huge hulking back. Um, so he's really cool, really awesome, great figure. 
So then uh, the other side of things, I finally finished Kingpin. Uh, to do that, I had to order from Hasbro Pulse because this way it's just not been in my stores. Uh, so first up, uh, I got Symbiote Spider-Man here, uh, which by the way, on a side note, uh, the four of these figures showed up in a box from Hasbro Pulse that didn't seem to hold any more than four figures because my Ebony Maw, which I ordered in this, which would finish off the Armor Thanos wave since I only wanted Hercules and Maw, uh, that's not showing up till Monday. So I think at Hasbro Pulse, they're still trying to figure things out because I think this is the largest box I got, was able to hold four figures. People have been getting like single uh, boxes for each figure. So hopefully they figure that out soon because I imagine free shipping, meaning that they had to pay extra shipping costs for a second box. Uh, they probably just don't have enough, you know, big enough boxes yet. Anyways, uh, Symbiote Spider-Man. This is the Marvel Legacy design, I guess. The Amazing Spider-Man 800 look. Uh, cool design overall. Not one I was asking for a figure of, but he's pretty awesome. I, I do like the, you know, the toes are cool. The claw hands are pretty neat. He's really skinny and, and weird. Um, I do like him. He turned out as a decent figure. Uh, so overall, pretty cool. I'm probably not going to review the Kingpin wave, to be honest, but, uh, of course, these are all going to be in the Marvel Legends run at the end of the year. Night Thrasher. I would have never bought this on his own without the Kingpin part, but, uh, because I did, I actually got a cool figure. He's got some parts from Beetle that got reused, but overall, he's awesome. I really do like him. The way the armor looks, the way the shiny glosses is pretty great. The skateboard has, like, spinning tires, which is amazing. And overall, I, I just really like him. Uh, my only complaint is this piece is loose, uh, so, you know just how it goes with a little add-on bits but night thrasher is actually a really cool figure if you get a chance to get them definitely pick them up uh, then moving along to absolute i hate this costume uh because of what it did to the character Th this costume was only associated with bad times for black cat for me so i, I don't really like it uh, i did not like the twist of black cat becoming like super crazy psychotic villain uh i'm going to be the new kingpin of new york thing uh, so I don't like this costume. I like the mold for Black Cat, and I wish that it was, you know, kind of a hybrid look. Uh, the eye things are weird on the chest, and the fact these are all black just make them blend in too much. Um, I would love to see, like, maybe classic Black Cat redone on this kind of body, because it does, it does look good. I do like it. Uh, I just don't like this costume. And then also on top of that, this whip is supposed to be her belt, which her belt can't be removed. It's one solid piece. Uh, it's loose, but it's a solid piece. So you'd have to like boil and pop the torso off and get the belt off, which isn't really worth it for this version of the character. And then lastly, we have Puma. I was gonna get Puma. Uh, he was one of the characters. I was like, oh yeah, sure, Wild Pack. And you know, sure, Puma. Um, overall, this wave just kind of fell flat, I think, in character choices. Nothing was really that exciting besides Silver Sable. Um, Night Thrasher trying is a good figure. Symbiote Spidey was a good figure. Puma's an okay figure. Uh, he's got a little bit of weird jankiness, but uh, overall, he's not bad. I, I do I do enjoy having him, but let's be honest, the reason why anybody bought this wave outside of maybe Sable was Kingpin. Uh, they really knew what they were doing with uh, with this, this lineup, because it's not a very strong lineup, but this is the one of the best Build-A-Figures I think Hasbro's ever produced, one of the best figures Hasbro's ever produced. I didn't think we'd get a Kingpin like this. I have the old Toy Biz one, which in fact, uh, let me just move real quick. He's right here. Uh, here is the old Toy Biz. I think it was the, I forget the name of it, but it was like the Heroes versus Villains 2 pack game at 2 pack Daredevil. Uh, this one was okay. I liked it. He was uh, a lot pudgier in the stomach, but he was a lot shorter. And overall, for the time, he was great. And for a while, he was good. But then Hasbro's like, yo, what about this? And I'm like, goodbye. Um,. I don't know what I'm gonna do with Kingpin yet, but uh, this this Marvel Legends Kingpin just, uh, they nailed it. They nailed his, his size without, like he doesn't have the big gut belly, but he's, you know, still thick. He's got, you know, completely new sculpt. I don't think they're gonna reuse this unless they make the black suit, which they could, uh, but really fantastic. I've had, you know, two parts of this. I had an arm and a leg for a while uh, from Silver Sable and Red Goblin. So it's really nice to finally complete this guy. Uh, he's got the articulation that I wasn't expecting, like he can look up more than the Marvel Select Ant-Man and Wasp can. Shoulders are fantastic, the elbows are great, they rotate, uh, the wrists can pivot and twist. He's got an upper ball torso, which you can see just the jacket is a separate piece so it doesn't get in the way, which is awesome. The hips move out, forward, he's got a nice meaty rotation, and a nice meaty uh, knee joint. 
and he's got a little bit of ankle tilt, not a whole lot, but he's not a super action-y kind of character. And of course, you got this wonderful cane, uh, which you can have him hold in different ways. I kind of like to have him pose like this, where he's got the cane down, uh, just because that looks best, but you can't really have him hold that. Now, of course, the you know Build-A-Figure isn't just this. He actually has an alternate head. So you pull this off, you get go from the neutral expression to the angry one. So he's angry Kingpin, uh, really angry. It's nice to give the option if you're doing like a battle diorama. I do think I like the calm head on Kingpin a little bit more just for standing there. And then of course the Shadow King head from Professor Xavier was designed to go on here. And uh, that looks really cool. Uh, overall, I do, I do wish I could get a second Kingpin. I'm gonna kinda just, because of the demand for this build a figure, because of the lack of distribution, it's not easy just to go pick up like another wave of this, or another set of this wave. That's a lot of money just to get Shadow King. So maybe down the line they'll make like a black suit kingpin in some reissue, kind of like how they reissued Thanos and a couple other build a figures, and then maybe I can just, you know, pick a pick which one Kingpin and then whichever one would be Shadow King. I'll probably put this on the black suit if they do it. Um, but yeah, Toy Biz did it with their Kingpin, they made a black suit, so it's very possible Hasbro could as well. Now moving all that aside. Moved aside really good because I knocked over all the figures. Uh, lastly, we have this, which was a surprise for my dad. There was a bookseller at his work, uh, and he came home with this Marvel year by year, a visual history updated and expanded edition, uh, which I just wanted to show off a little bit because it is super awesome. Uh, there are figures falling everywhere because this is not a stable setup. This is not a stable table. Okay, Caliban is hooked on my Ghost Rider that's on the wall. All right, uh, moving forward. Uh, this is a great book. It leads up, I think, till Marvel Legacy or something like that. Uh, we've got just different things about Timely Comics, the early days. It's just a year-by-year -year guide. You got character stuff. Um, I'm trying to show it off, but it's hard to pick up and show. You know, like the Avengers meeting the X-Men or stuff like that. Like, there's Long Shot. It's really cool. I've, I've, I've wanted to learn more about Marvel's history. I know a lot about DC's history. Um, so learning Marvel's history would be really good for me. And so this book is, is fantastic for that. And uh, let me check to see where it goes up to, just so we have a frame of reference. It runs up to 2016. So it runs up to Civil War II and like Renew Your Vows kind of era and uh, Secret Empire stuff. So anyways, that is Marvel Year by Year. And that is Sign Out Pickups. Uh, thanks for joining me on this journey of finishing Build-A-Figures and getting all kinds of stuff. I, I had a fun time uh, buying things and now I gotta go through the wonderful collector torment of where do I put it? Uh, Marvel Legends display to my right is just gonna get probably completely torn apart and reorganized because I got a lot of figures that need to go in and uh, super excited to do that, super fun always. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments if you want to see a full review on Caliban, the Caliban wave. I, I think I want to do that. And let me know if you want to see the Persona Figmas get reviewed, because I I might enjoy doing those. Um, I, do like, I do like Figmas a lot. And I do like Persona 5 a lot. So anyways, uh, stay tuned for future videos. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on a video. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for video updates and other cool posts and pictures and possible uh, polls to decide upcoming videos. Uh, check out Ryan Darklaw 643 at Darklaw 643 on Twitter. He is the graphic artist that does the thumbnails and other logos and the end card and such for the channel. And he does have commissions for art. So hit him up and let him know what you want to get. And also check out Hero Club at hero-club.com for all of your hero news and more. Hit that like button just so you let me know that the video was good and you enjoyed it. And until next time, this is Sign Out saying goodbye.